Hey guys, Metroid Saxon here. Welcome back to Ace Academy, the second part. We're about to start our class. Silence. I take a deep breath, stealing my nerves, and firmly push open the doors to the auditorium. After a quick scan of the room, I select a seat near the back. I can tell this is a first year introductory class based on how spread out the students are and how quiet the room is. I hate that I have to <laughs> take intro classes again. Some of my electives from CINY did not encompass the full scope of the course material. Whatever that means. A hush blanket the auditorium as a man strides in front of the room. Good morning. This is Paladin 101. Is everyone where you are supposed to be? A professor waits patiently as a handful of students shuffle to one of the nearest exit. I yawn and watch them leave with disinter disinterest. He drags a web page from his tablet onto the screen behind him. Oh, that'd be cool! You should have a tablet and suddenly throw a page from your tablet. This is the class web link. Consider this portal as your lifeline for the course. You will find all your assignments and readings here, as well as your current grade in the course. You can find my contact information in the tab marked Contact. My office hours are listed, so please do not hesitate to stop by. Even I get lonely at times, and I appreciate visitors. <laughs> that comment got a couple of weak chuckles from the room. Memorize the information. I was supposed to store the information into my memory. Now that we've gotten all the boring stuff out the way, I'm sure you're all eager to learn more about the qualifier exams on Friday. The class vibe visibly perks up. The qualifier exam will not only register you as an active pilot, but will also provide you with your team ranking. I'm sure you've already picked out your teams by now, but I'd still like to remind you all that each team must have a minimum of four people in order to qualify. A hand shoots up from the middle of the room. Yes? Are you sure exams are this Friday? That only gives us two days to find a team. Soft snickers fill the room. The students visibly shrink from the eyes now focused on him. The majority of students who began their first year here at Ace Academy are aware of the timeline for the qualifier exams and use their summers to form a team and prepare. In the past, we had extended the preparation time before the exam, but found that the majority of students did not need nor want the extra days. So we adjusted our schedules accordingly. But what about those of us who didn't know about the qualifier ahead of time? What do we do? I suggest you get to work finding yourself a team. Any other questions? The student scowls but shakes his head. Good. The qualifier exam will pit your team starting four against four AI gears. You will then be assigned a ranking based upon your overall performance relative to the other teams. Don't worry if you can't defeat all the AI gears. They are programmed to be extremely difficult to beat. Please ensure your gear is in pristine condition for battle. All exams are demonstrated live instead of in a simulator to most accurately gauge ability. Any questions? He has answered with silence. Let's get started then. <sighs> Ugh, class. Please check the web link for your assignment and have them complete for the next class. Welcome to Ace Academy. I hope you all have a great rest of the day. Alrighty then, class is over. A thunder of chairs scrape along the floor as students file out the classroom. Those who remain chat <laughs> animatedly in small groups. Yawning, I wait for the crowd in front of the door to thin before making my way out of the room. Once I'm by the door, a snippet of nearby conversation catches my attention. Hey, did you see what they brought into the hangar today? Yeah, that ancient looking thing? <laughs> I'll be amazed if it still works. Where the hell do you even find something like that? I bet they fished it out of the ocean. The students laugh loudly. I have a sinking feeling I know what they're talking about. As I hurry out the classroom, I check my phone and I'm excited to see an email confirmation. I eagerly read through the email. It's just a note letting me know my gear has been registered now and now I have access to the hangar. But that certainly made things easy for me at CINY. I spent days going through the registration process. We had to submit all the paperwork ourselves. And of course, nobody in the administrative office was ever helpful. Satisfied, I put away my phone and make my way to the hangar. I bring up the map on my phone and touch the hangar, which lights up. Soon pulsating light dots the path from my current location to the hangar. It's a bit of a trek away from the heart of the campus, but I make good time. I scan my ID and walk in. I follow a long hallway which leads to a grand space filled with towering gears. Every one of them is sleek, refined and updated with the latest model of accessories and weapons. They weren't kidding when they said Japan was the leader of mecha tech. I walk past several rows of gears until... I'm reunited with Eagle. 
That is actually a really impressive mech. It reminds me of Gundam. A crowd of students surround it. They speak in hushed tones but break into snickers when they notice me. I push my way towards them but they disperse before I can even reach them. Most are trying to hide their laughter but failing miserably. I give my gear a detailed inspection to make sure it didn't suffer any dings or damages during transit. So far so good. My gear may be a bit bulky than others, but it's a great working condition, which ultimately is what matters. The colours are still bright too. I wonder if they polished it for me off. Or if it always looked this good. The other guys might laugh at your gear, but I sense that it's different. Spirit. Something that makes it stand out amongst the others. Yes, I can feel this one is truly special indeed. Uh... I hadn't noticed the student behind me. His arms are folded and he's nodding with closed eyes as if... As if he's saying something truly deep and meaningful. He seems harmless enough. Sort of. I may as well see what he wants. I might even be able to ask some questions about... Of my own afterwards. Hey. Can I help you? There. Oh, right. He seems almost surprised if he'd forgotten why he came. He fidgets so much, I wonder if he's nervous. The name's Sho. Sho Shinjiro. Pleased to meet you. He thrusts his hand out in greeting, grinning from ear to ear. I cautiously shake his hand. Uh, hi. I'm Cyan Williams. You're a second year pilot too, right? Yeah, how did you- Not that many students transfer during second year, you know? You're the talk of the pilot's lounge. A mysterious foreign transfer student. That would explain the interest around my gear. I guess they didn't quite live up to their expectations. I'm not sure what they were expecting, though. And I deduced that you are this transfer student. I wonder what gave me away. It could possibly be my magnificent golden locks. I've got to say, I thought you'd be taller. He starts comparing our heights with his hand. He's a bit disappointed to find out we're about the same height. Again, just what he's expecting. We don't all look like Cienardo de Laprio. I think his perception of Americans is a bit weak, is a bit skewed. Anyway, you're new here, which means you're not part of a team yet, right? Right, that's been on my mind since class ended. I nod, almost certain I know what he's about to say next. Well, it just so happens that my team is lacking that oh-so-vital fourth member we need to be able to compete. He looks at me hopefully, then leans in close. A little too close. There's no space, dude! You see where I'm going with this, don't you? Basically what I'm saying is, you should join my team because we're awesome. Hey. Why the hell not? What? Well, what the hell? Seems friendly enough. Plus I'm not exactly in a position to be picky about teams I join. Sure, why not? Now that's what I'm talking about, brosif. Excitement brightens his face and I admit the feeling is somewhat infectious. Come on, our lounge is that way. I'll introduce you to the team. Show and I start making our way down the hall. Now, where should I start? Oh, right. So there's this girl. Show talks the entire way to the lounge. He's constantly interrupting himself and going off on a tangent. So I only catch about half of what he's saying. We navigate through the tunnels and eventually reach the exit. Show opens the door and ushers me through with a small flourish. The lounge is filled with groups of pilots. I guess everyone is catching up with their teams. Sho squeezes between the groups and then follow him towards the back corner of the room. He pauses with two girls in front in front of two girls. Um, the one with the dark hair stares at her feet as she notices Sho, while the other red, ha red hair continues chatting on his cell phone. Sho motions towards the dark haired girl. This is Mayu. She's the coolest person on this team. But uh, don't tell Kauri I said that. He glances at the redhead, which isn't paying the slightest bit of attention to us. Mayu blushes deeply. That's not true. It's nice to meet you, Mayu. I'm Cyan. I smile at her and hold her hand. She wrinkles her brown confusion and gingerly shakes my hand. And continues to shake it. Um. Sorry. She immediately drops my hand and returns her gaze to the floor. Show towards turns towards the redhead. Hey, quit being rude. Her gaze shifts from to him and his smile falters. I mean, will you be done soon? I'd like you to meet someone. She frowns. I need to call you back. And snaps her phone shut. Oh, they got flip phones! <laughs> so, this is Kauri. Something about that scowl seems familiar, especially that hair. Oh no! You! 
Look at that earlier. I'm really sorry. Forget it. She waves her hand dismissively. But I don't want there to be any hard feelings. She stares at me across her arms as if daring to defy her. I told you to forget it. She glances back and forth. Show glances back and forth between us. Bro, why didn't you tell me you two were already friends? Well, actually... Shut up! Okay. <laughs> I instinctively pause. Who knew a girl so petite could be so terrifying? She glares at Sho, who's already cowering and protecting his head. <laughs> Don't hurt me! <laughs> Don't hurt me! Cower is the firehead. Carrie rolls her eyes. He and I are not friends. Uh, um, okay. So, like I said, this is Cowrie, and this is... Zion. Right. Cowrie not so... She shrugs. It's not like we have much choice anyway. Sweet. You're on the team, bro. Thanks. I guess... So, you're probably wondering why we need another member. Actually, I hadn't, but now you mention it. Yeah, kind of. Basically, Kauri and I were part of this super awesome team, but then they stopped being awesome, so we left. Wow, Sho. For once, you didn't ramble. He feigns offense. <gasps> you wound me. All my stories are brief. Remember when I told you about my one birthday where everyone showed up wearing the same clothes as me? He turned to me. Actually, it's a pretty good story. So basically, I grew up in this kind of... Mayu knows what I'm talking about. Don't encourage him. Mayu smiles faintly. Anyway, the point is, we used to be on a team, but left because the team was turning into something we didn't agree with. Except Mayu. She's a first year. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, she got a whole bunch of invites to other teams, but decided to join us. We're pretty lucky to have her. How come she chose this team? My she's comfortable uncomfortably under my black glaze. I trust Shell. I wait for her to say more, but she doesn't. Carrie taps her foot impatiently. So, now that you know all that, are you in? They're all a little strange in their own way, but I think I can learn to get along with them. Even Carrie. Yeah, I'm in. Great. Carrie checks her phone. I've spent too much time talking to you and I need to get home. With a short wave, she heads out. I swear that woman's got a fucking... We should get going too. Mayu nods. Yeah, me too. We'll see you tomorrow? Yeah, see ya. We wave goodbye and go our separate ways. Time to make the trek all the way to the far end of the lot. I wonder why they make the visitor park so far away. Wouldn't that discourage rather than encourage people to visit? Although I grumble the entire way to my bike, I eventually find it the same spot I parked it. Time to get going. I hop on my bike and put on my helmet. Kicking my bike into gear, I make my way home. As I open the front door, I hear clanging in the kitchen. Nikki must be home. Just as I predicted, she's stirring a pot surrounded by a mess of appliances. Hey, Nikki! She glances up in surprise. Hey, you're home early. Am I? It's right around dinner time. What are you making? Guess. I try to peek in the pot, but she hides it from me. No cheating. I breathe in deeply and pause to sort the aroma lingering in the air. The dominant scent is of tomato, followed by meat, beef to be specific, plus a hint of celery and basil. You're making bolognese. She laughs and shows me the simmering sauce pot in the pot. Good guess. It was no guess. The super smell I knows. I solemnly tap my nose. You're so weird. Who actually names their nose? Laugh all you want now, but you'll be singing a different tune when the super smeller gets you out of danger. And why would I be in danger? I don't know. Maybe you're only planning a sneak attack against you. She laughs again. <laughs> I don't have any enemies. Just give it time. Rude. I'm very likable. She swats my arm in and it turns to my laugh. Glad you're the one cooking and not me. 
Everything you make is delicious. You really have a talent for cooking, you know. Oh, shut up. She tries to hold back her smile, but fails. Did you go shopping after school today? I didn't know Kaito kept these ingredients at home. Yeah, I did. Sushi yesterday was so good, but I wanted something more hearty today, you know? Hmm. To Nikki, hearty foods are comfort foods. Does that mean you had a bad day at school? She blinks in surprise, then laughs. Of course not. It was great. I met a lot of people at the club fair they held after school. There are so many cool clubs. Did you know they have a kendo club? You definitely wouldn't find that back home. I think I'm going to try out for their dance team, though. Maybe run for student government. <laughs> wow. Sounds like you've had a pretty productive day. She quietly checks the pastors and nods. Definitely. I'm a little disappointed they don't have a cooking club, but that's okay. They offer a cooking class, which I'm taking. Soon, I will be an expert in Japanese cuisine. Maybe you can start a cooking club. Ooh, maybe. I begin to set the table for three when Nikki shakes her head. Didn't you see Uncle Kaido's text? He'll be home late tonight. I haven't been checking my phone. As soon as the table's set and both Nikki and I have a full portion of pasta in front of us. How was your first day? My day was kind of weird. It started out horrible. I almost ran over this girl on my way to school, but being the gentleman that I am, Nikki snorts and I pointedly ignore her. I stop to help her. I'm lucky I did that too because when I was looking for a team to join, the only one looking for members was hers. So she let you join? Yep. Lucky you. That's what I said. So it sounds like finding a team today was super important. Oh yeah. The qualifiers on Friday. But that's in two days. I know. Everyone else needs to advance and form a team over the summer. Well, that's not really fair. Yeah, it's fine. Sounds like you've had quite the day. The conversation continues and eventually lulls to natural close. Soon both our plates are polished clean. I'm so full. Who told you to be such a pig? I help her with cleanup. I think I'm gonna go relax for a bit and then go to bed early tonight. Yeah, me too. Good night. Night. We part ways and I head into my room. It's too early to go to bed, so I'll start making some progress on getting a parking pass. Who knows how long that'll take before they mail me one. And I'd like to get it sooner rather than later. I log on to my web link and find the document to request a permit. It takes me longer than I expected to fill it out, all the paperwork, and it leaves me exhausted. Crawling into bed, I close my eyes, and soon fall asleep. The sun shines through my curtains and across my face. I keep my eyes shut and turn over in my bed and force myself back to sleep, but the more I try to return to sleep, the more awake I become. Time is it? My clock flashes half six. I still have another half hour before my alarm goes off. I should get back to sleep. I curl deeper into my blanket, but soon get bored. The only time I ever naturally wake up like this is when I have jet lag. I'm not sure if this is a blessing or a curse. I guess I might as well get ready. I quickly change my uniform and head downstairs. To an empty kitchen. It's weird being the first one on. Usually Nikki is doing her thing in the kitchen. I'll catch up on some reading while I'm for her. She should be up soon anyway. I pull up the news app on my phone. The front page doesn't have anything too interesting. Until I spot an article on Aluden Enterprises. Aluden Enterprises has offered, officially announced their intentions to sponsor an up and coming team in the coming war games. The rapidly expanding R&D company is gaining a lot of attention in the field of Seno Robotics and they're putting pressure on establishing innovators such as Vector Industries and Paragon Weapons. Hmm. Much of their success can be attributed to CEO Donny Ro Donny Roos, sorry, who's the top graduate in the pilot program in the Ace Academy. Oh, who was? And a visionary when it comes to modern and functional design for gears. 
think I've heard these guys before. This be a local company who hasn't quite expanded to the states yet. Sounds like they're making a name for themselves though. Time my writing reads 657. I listen for any sound signs of life upstairs, but the house is still. I better grab something to eat before I need to go. Doesn't seem like Nikki's coming down anytime soon. My phone flashes to the next article. A headline on Dash U. This should be good. I push the button shaped like a film projector on the bottom of the page, and the text projects on the nearest surface. Then I place my phone in the dock on the table, so the text shines on the kitchen table. Grab a couple of slices of bread and stick them in the toaster. As I wait for my toast to finish, I sit at the table and read the article. Well, I'm getting tired just reading this myself. Oh, I knew this was supposed to be intellectual, not boring. <laughs> Kanaku Dishitaru, CEO of Dashu, made an unscheduled appearance at the memorial service yesterday for Yudai Misaki a year ago. Misaki? Hmm. Interesting. The community was shocked by the unexpected death of the Ace Academy's most promising pilot. Hmm, I remember that. The family was honoured that the mighty mogul took the time to show his respect to their son and co concurrently postponed the unveiling of Dashu's newest line of energy drinks. The introduction has to be rescheduled to take place next week. What are you reading? Ah! I jump in surprise and I fall off my chair as I try to turn towards her. She looks at me strangely. Jeez, what's your problem? You scared me! Why? Were you looking at hentai or something? What? <laughs> no, of course not! She laughs at my horrified expression and walks past me. <laughs> I know, I know. You're reading the news. I can see it on the table. Boring. You know that makes you officially old, right? Only old people read the news for fun. Nikki glanced at my toast, which just popped up while we were talking. Your toast is burned. What? I leap out my chair and stand beside her. It's not burned. She flips over a real dark side of charcoal. Oh. You're so hopeless. How did you survive in college without me? I ate in the cafeteria. That explains it. She throws away the toast and pulls two yogurts in the fridge. Well, since you botched breakfast, we'll have to make do with a quick snack if you don't want to be late. I accept the yogurt she has me. We both finished them in record time. Then we grab our things and head out the door. Are you able to give me a ride today? The bus yesterday was so crowded. Sorry, Nikki. I'm not taking my bike today. I don't have a parking pass yet. Oh. How long will it take before you get one? I'm not sure. Uh, hopefully soon. Well, for the sake of your sanity, I hope it's not too long. Thanks, I think. <laughs> Nikki laughs. I'll see you later, okay? Yay. See ya. She waves and heads for a bus stop while I head for mine. At least it's a nice day to be waiting for the bus. It stops a bit crowded. I lean up against the shelter as I wait. The bus squeals to a halt in front of me only a few minutes after my arrival. I follow the other passengers on, scan my ID and search for a rose for free seat. I settle into the first seat I find and grumble as a large man sits beside me, crushing me against the window. I can already imagine how enjoyable this ride will be. Luckily, it isn't a long ride, and I'm at school before I can complain too much. I pull out my schedule for my phone to see my first class is Gear Arsenal 201. The building isn't too far away either. I soon reach the building. The classroom's about half the size of the lecture hall for my piloting 101 class. For some reason, this is comfortable to me. Probably because it reminds me of my class sizes at CINY. Take a seat near the back of the room as the professor enters. Good morning, class. Welcome to Gear Arsenal 201. I'm sure you're all tired of hearing the same welcome spiel, so I won't even bother with it. Instead, we're going to drive straight into the material. Question. Who can name one of the leading companies in gear weapon manufacturing? Oh, that was Paragon, wasn't it? Yes, it was Paragon. Before I have a chance to answer, another student chimes in. Vector Industries! Sorry, incorrect. Vector! It's Paragon Weaponry! Very good. Why isn't it Vector? Vector deals with thrusting and maneuverability, whereas Paragon deals with weaponry. 
hence the name Paragon Weaponry. Their recent area of study has shown that. He goes into the details of Paragon Weaponry's R and D in the future of beam weaponry for the remainder of the class. That's all the time we have for today. You'll find this week's readings and assignments on your web link. Have a good day. Students scramble to collect their things before hurrying out of the room. I think I'll go back to the hangar. The class has inspired me to get a proper looking at my gear. I take a path through the pilot's lounge and follow the tunnel until I reach my gear. Pulling down the ladder beside the docking station, I climb up to the top, which is about level with the chest section of my robot. I unlock the chest cavity with, with a mechanical roar, it splits open in separating panels, revealing a lowered seat. I easily hop into the seat and breathe in the comfort scent of metal and plastic. I faintly remember, faintly reminds me of a new car smell. Once I'm settled, I triggered the closing sequence. As the chest panels return, my seat scoops me further into my gear until I'm nested in the darkness of my cockpit. I initialize the boot-up sequence. The cockpit glows a faint red, then flickers into life. And I can't help but smile at the familiarity of it all. The bright glow of the panels illuminates the interior until there is tr no trace of shadow left. Statistically blinking around me in a series of rapid numbers and diagrams. Gear initialization sequencing complete. The familiar voice of my gear feels like a warm welcome from an old friend. Eagle, please run comprehensive check. System in progress. Nothing to do now but wait. The lights along my display pulses with changing colours as the check progresses. It flows through warm colours, red, orange, yellow, before illuminating the cockpit with a bright green. All system functions normal. Unknown docking station detected. Register the current dock as home station. Completed. Recommendation. Please update system calibration <coughs> configuration. It recommend this is recommended all the time. Whenever we change location, Eagle will request a recalibration system. Even the slightest difference in air pressure can trigger an inaccuracy. At least the process is easy. All I have to do is make sure to follow the follow this correctly follow sequential numbers in, in order to Eagle to achieve the necessary internal calculations. All right, start up the process. Calibration sequence initiating. I get a few minutes as Eagle automatically adjusts itself. Calibration successful. Perfect. Everything seems to be in order. After one last look, I shut down my gear and unlock the chest cavity again. Once I hop out, the panels slide back into place until I hear a faint click of them locking. As I turn towards the elevator, I spot Sho waving at me. I nimbly make my way down and stand beside him. Mr. Brosif! Hey, how's it going? Good. Is this your go-to hangout place? This is the second time I've run into you here. <laughs> I guess it's starting to be. What are you doing here? I just thought I'd pay a visit to my gear. It helps when I keep her company for a bit. Keeps her spirits up. Huh. You mean a girl? Is there a girl you're keeping captive in your gear? Show laughs. <laughs> if only. Unfortunately, no girl ever goes near my gear. He sighs wistfully while I try very hard to keep a straight face. I'm so sorry. Me too. So, what were you doing here? Just checking to make sure everything's working fine. And does it? Yep. He glances curiously at my gear. How about a simulator match? I shrug. Be nice to get a feel of how things are in are done around Ace. Sure. We can both use the basic robot program. That way, all accessories and weapons will be the same, and it'll be based on skill alone. May the best man win. 
He grins and races to the opposite direction. I see him pause by a green gear before I get back into my own. Once I'm settled in the cockpit, I switch on the network f configuration. Immediately, a request from show comes in and I accept. After we're connected, we boot up our virtual training simulation program. Oh, very fancy. I haven't seen an American style gear up close before. Mm hmm. I experiment with my gear controls and watch in amusement as it makes the same movements with the simulator. Simulators are freakishly accurate as emulators to emulating the real thing, but it still can't quite replace the feeling of live matches. You can't feel every impact or even the slightest shift in motion with a VTS. As you can see, both of us are kitted with the same standard equipment. You have your energy shield for blocking, thrusters for movement, a ranged weapon, and a close combat weapon. I evaluate my gear and find that all the components he mentioned. Any particular reason why we aren't playing from our personal arsenal? This will level the playing field. We'll have to win by skill alone. Trying to see what I'm made of? Show just grins. Remember, you have to use the right tool at the right time. There's usually more than one right move you can make, but you have to think fast. I'm no stranger to penetrating a gear with my beam blade. Snorts out a laugh. I hope you soften him up first with some shots. I can't stop the grin on my face. Are you ready? Yep. Let's do this. So, this is how the game plays in the main section. You have a reaction timer of about 5 seconds, and you have to choose the correct reaction in order to get the correct response. So let's begin. My hands fall naturally into place and grip the controls. I can't stop the smile that spreads across my face as my heart beats faster in anticipation. I've missed this. Eagle shifts into fighting stance and holds out his guns, while Sho activates his thrusters and points his double guns at me. Uh, let's evade that. I dash out of the way and his attack misses its mark. I quit one of my guns and return fire. He dodges his bullet, but my bullet still grazes him and he takes some damage. As I boost forward, Sho moves back to keep the distance between us. He shoots again, but his shot is, is not accurate, and I weave away. With my gun in hand, I take aim and fire! My aim is true, and show shield shimmer as it absorbs the shot. Judging by how deep of a shimmer, it looks as if he took a significant amount of damage. Since show likes using ranged weapons, I better close the distance and force him into melee bow. I boost forward. Slash! I switch to my sword mid-boost and swing the blade in a high arc. Show tries to block with his guns, but my sword lands on them with a loud crack. We struggle in a battle of wills, and sweat beads down my face. A loud roar escapes my lips as I channel my strength through my, into my attack and break through Sho's defense. As my sword falls through, Sho's gear goes dark. With the match over, I shut down my gear and get back on the ground. After a few minutes, Sho appears. Not bad. I knew I made a good choice with you. I've got a sixth sense for these things. <laughs> Thanks. You're not so bad yourself. Anyway, we'll want to meet up tomorrow before the qualifier to practice. So, what's your number? We quickly exchange numbers. So, I guess I should go get some stuff done. Yeah, me too. Well, I'll see you later then. Hmm. Let's see. Do I want to play another match for show? Do I want to study or do I want to hit the pilot's lounge? I'll hit the pilot's lounge. Bye! So, I'll save that there, because we've got a lot coming up soon. Namely, one hell of a fight. So I'll see you all in the next part where we get into our first qualifier. See you guys!